All right, Tyler, first round. Uh, go to pistols. Pistols. Okay, buy, buy a PT-50, that's what you want right now. Yep. Buy a Desert Eagle. Always go Deagle. It's like a one-shot kill on anybody. Don't listen to West. I put in like 500 hours in this game. Deagle got nerfed way back in January, okay? It's like, you want the PT-50. Right, Get the PT-50. Wait, how do, I, how do I sprint? Just. There's no sprinting in Counter-Strike. Uh, yeah, just keep going that way. Look for the guys that look like police. Yeah, yeah, get them. No. There were so many of them. Now, go banana, go banana. Where's banana? Go banana. <sighs> Tyler, dude, we've been over this. Okay, banana is the section in Inferno that connects T-spawn with bombsite B. Why is it called we've banana? We've been over this like five why it, times. What, why is it called banana? It's like narrow and kind of curvy. I don't know, it's just, listen, I don't have time for this right now. Just keep practicing. I gotta go do this Killing Floor 2 interview. Keep at <sighs> Kill some chickens, that's what I'm gonna do. Chicken. I can't hit the chicken. Chicken, stop running from me. Hey, John. Hey, how's, how's it going? It? How's it going? How are you? Great. So, you know, your, your gore system is a huge part of the games, and we covered in our future story. Uh, how does a developer go about designing an intricate or system like that. It seems like a pretty unique uh, project. Yeah, I think I think it started out really, uh, you know, us wanting to uh, level it up from the first game. You know, that was the gore was a was a part of the game. It really uh, it made it visceral. It, you know, one of the things that uh, Bill Monk, our creative director, says is the you know what it looks like when you kill a monster in your game is part of the reward you get for uh, accurately shooting the enemy. And uh, we wanted to uh, make that reward uh, more rewarding. So, uh, if that sounds kind of funny, this is something I walked into a, a guy's room the other day, and uh, and on the pictures of on his screen of uh, burnt barbecued chicken, <laughs> and I said, uh, "Let me guess, you're working on the gore system?" And he said, "Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to emulate what charred flesh looks like." So he's scrolling through pictures on Google of burnt barbecued chicken and uh, but you know looking a lot of reference of, of anatomy and uh, and uh, musculature and and uh, and then just figuring out what you know you have to draw the line somewhere you, know, you can't uh, you can't blow the guys into a, you know a million pieces I mean maybe maybe you could but but we, you know, we draw the line, you know, at a reasonable level, just as far as what the technology can support and the performance can support, and uh, then try to take it as far as we can within those constraints. And you guys mocap the weapons as well, is that right? Is that is that even like a tr uh, conventional technique for animating weapons in games? Yeah. So traditionally, uh, traditionally weapons are, are uh, traditionally motion capture is only used for third-person animations, so character movements and things like that. Um, and, and sometimes facial capture for games that are really heavy on dialogue. Uh, but motion capture in, for the first person weapons is, is really kind of rare. I, there may be other developers have done it. I've never heard of, of anyone else doing that. And we, re we really wanted to capture uh, that fidelity. Um, and, and to that end, one of the things that we wanted to do is, you know, really make sure that uh, even though the weapon reloads are very real, that they that they're still really fast and snappy because Killing Floor is a fairly fast-paced game, so we uh, we hired a a, spe a weapon specialist that specialized in in very fast reloads, the kind that you you know you look at on YouTube and you watch their hands and they're in a blur and you can't believe they reloaded that fast. Uh, but but we we brought a person in like that to do uh, to do uh, the reloads. So you'll see when you look in the game, you'll see. Guys doing crazy kind of reloads that you that you've never seen before. Uh, we've got one like with the shotgun where the guy, where the guy, it's kind of hard to describe, but he he brings his hand up, shoves it around in, slides the slides the the uh, the the lever forward so that he can pull the trigger, and and at any point after he's done that, he's able to fire the shotgun while he's still putting the other rounds in. It's it's difficult to describe, but when you see it on screen, it's. You're going to see just these crazy, super fast reloads doing weird motions that you that you've never seen before. It's it's kind of neat. It's it's fun to watch and and it's it's it makes it kind of interesting to see. Have you guys laid out uh, you know the, the whole set of guns that you want in the game at this point, or or some sort of open to discussion? I'm sure that you have some returning weapons as well as some new ones, and obviously there's a greater focus on melee this time around. 
Yeah, so we, we do have uh, we do have a weapon list that we're, we're working off of um, that evolves over time, but we we think we've got a pretty solid list of uh, of what we want to do uh, for the weapon list. And this time around, uh, in in Killing Floor One, uh, the the melee it was it was it was okay, but it really it didn't get the focus that the uh, that the gunplay did. So this time around, we're uh, we're really uh, working very hard to to make sure that if, if a player wants to play as a melee character, uh, that it's really enjoyable. That uh, that you know it's more than just mashing a button and seeing a guy, you know, go like this. Um, one of the things that that we have is you know whichever the, the directions that you're uh, that you're that you're pressing your your movement keys will actually determine which direction your your character melees in. So for instance, when you come up to a monster, if you want to try to chop their head off. You can press sideways, swing sideways, you know, aim at their neck, chop their head off. You can swing overhead and you might slice them down the center. So it's it's almost like, uh, you know, it's it's like picking your menu of how you want to eviscerate these monsters by which direction you push. So it's it's interesting. We've got we've got some things that we're playing around with. We're we're not we're not, you know, the melee is constantly evolving, but we're playing around with with some things like blocking. You know, you know, damage mitigation and players able to, to parry attacks from the monsters. So uh, it's it's pretty interesting, but uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely an enter process with the melee. You guys obviously come from a modding heritage, um, and you become a independent developer over time. Uh, what's your vision for the modability of Killing Floor Two? What kind of stuff do you want people to be able to contribute? Every system that we develop, we look at: is this going to be model moddable? In the past, we would usually just we develop our game, and and at the end of the day, we'd give uh, we give the fans a subset of the tools that we had, and uh, but <clears throat> but the code systems themselves were not really developed with modability on the forefront. So now you know I at least a couple times a week you know we'll we'll be doing code reviews and we'll look at we'll look at something and we'll say mm, we need to rework this because if some modder wants to change that property or they want to do this, that's going to be really difficult. But with the tools that we're giving players, there, there's a lot of things. You know, they'll be able to make their own monsters. They'll be able to easily, uh, easily toy around with, you know, damage and, and. Uh, but people will be able to make, you know, levels, characters, weapons, and they'll be. They should be able to do it a lot easier uh, than they have in the past. So the plan is still to go on early access with Killing Floor Two. Do you guys have a sense of what timing you're looking for on that? So we we have uh, we have an internal date. I would get rocks and clubs thrown at me by the rest of the guys here if I said what that was. Um, we're tracking pretty good to hit that date. So we're we're just going to wait until we're ready and announce you know until we're 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 getting pretty close and announce that. But we're trying to do something different with early access than I think a lot of developers are doing. Um, and I'm not saying that the, they're wrong for doing it, but uh, we are wanting to get our game to a beta state before going on early access but we don't want to deliver them a buggy alpha. And uh, we're not saying that's the right way to do it and other people are wrong. We just we just said, you know, this is an experiment we want to try. Most people are not putting that polish of games on early access. We want to try it and see what happens. All right, John, well, thanks for the update on your progress. Have yourself a good weekend there down in Georgia. All right, thank you, Evan. Yeah, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. Corey, what are you working on? Doing the magazine. Dude, it's Friday, it's like 4 o'clock. Let's go play Nidhogg. I'm still doing the magazine. We have to do the magazine. We, we make a magazine. Are you on deadline? Yes. It's always deadline. There's too much to do. What if we just went and played Nidhogg instead? You know, some of us actually have to do some work around here, Wes. I know you like to make a bet. Whoever wins the game of Nidhogg for the next week has to carry Coconut Monkey around with them everywhere in the office all week. Dude, I want to play some Nidhogg. Let's go do it. All right. OK, Corey. We're here to play Nidhogg, best of three. Whoever loses has to carry Coconut Monkey around for a week everywhere they go in the office. Like a little baby. Like a little, yeah, like, like a baby, I guess. Let's, <laughs> I just wanna play Nidhogg, it's been a long time for me. And this I is know, the only way you can get me into it. I know you're a fan and also love gambling. Oh God, I'm orange, okay. So. You've <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> Look, I didn't say I was good at Nidhogg. Oh, look, I pulled out your spleen. Oh, that's horrible. I did rip your head off. Uh, so you just killed me twice in a row. That's, that's not cool. Did you, did you think I was going to hold back? I ain't holding back. 
Here's my favorite part of Nidhogg. This is, this is straight up my favorite part. You pretty much just crushed me in the first round. Oh God, you stabbed me in the head. It's a strange PC game. I mean, it, I can't imagine really playing this on a TV uh, or, uh, or playing, playing this on a computer at a monitor. Like, so, this is a game that needs to be shared with other people. The thing I really like about Nidhogg is that this is one of the first, it feels like it's kind of one of the first games like on the cusp of this local multiplayer like revival or like especially for indie developers and on the PC, like there really haven't been very many local multiplayer PC games. It's usually kind of an afterthought if it's even there at all. Ah. And now we've got, oh, I just ran right <laughs> into your sword. Oh my God. Uh, and now we've got Nidhogg and we've got like Sports Friends is coming out soon, which I'm really excited about. I, there, are, there are reasons to play games with other people sitting right in front of you. I'm just gonna take my time. Everything will be okay. I don't need to feed myself to the beast. Who needs that? No, I, I mean, I really appreciate that there are, oh no! There are more options for PC games now instead of just sitting solitary at your desk, uh, playing a strategy game or playing online with people. Like there's, there's an experience to playing with people that are with you. So you just crushed me in best two out of three. What if we did best three out of five? <sighs> All right. Can you give me one more? All right. So you've played you've played quite a bit of Sports Friends, right? I've played a, I've played some Sports Friends. So I haven't really played much Joust, and I'm curious how that's going to work as a PC game. Better than a PS4 game, I think, honestly, because you can take a laptop outside. That's true, and that's, that's a really good point. Is it still going to use the Move controllers? And if so, like how many how many PC gamers are going to have those? Because like the great thing about this game is you can just play it with a 360 controller, and that's probably true most games that you know support Steam multiplayer, you know, split screen uh, or single screen multiplayer on PCs, you can just use a 360 controller. Yeah, I don't know if the developer has honestly like thought that part through. The other games that are part of Sports Friends, um, are all controller games? Their their controller or even a few of them could work okay with the, the PC. The um, the the Super Pole Riders game in particular is Which is such a great name. It is really great name. But it, it, that's actually, there's a web demo of it where, that you play with a keyboard and mouse in a very co-op-like fashion. So it, I could see that working with a few different controller schemes. But even then, like, you're, you're not playing it with like WSAD, right? Yeah. It's very not PC in that way. I shouldn't have let you win that one. I think maybe you were talking a little too much. Maybe. You so it's 2v1 now. All right, where are we gonna play next? All of the stages in this game are really different, which is cool. And they all affect the gameplay, which is which is nice. Like if you're running on this bridge here, you see how that that cloud bridge is kind of going away and I can die. And there were the Well, I didn't mean to demonstrate wow. like that. Yeah, you just killed yourself. But it's it's interesting that this Oh <laughs> God, that was a good that was a good throw. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. I think neither of us are good enough at the game that we're like legitimately fencing. We're kind of going crazy. But just the ability to throw throw the sword, that was a really good throw, and the the kind of like cat and mouse game you play of taking, like you're battling for who can run towards the other side of the screen. The right? way it mixes the, the fighting mechanics and the endless runner part. Oh shit. So you've probably only got like one more screen after this. Oh, I'm losing it. Come on. Cannot wait to watch you walk around with Coconut Monkey. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna lose this. It's gotta come down to a show off. Oh no. Final oh. screen. This is gonna feel good. If you beat me at this, oh no. I'm gonna have to crush you in Towerfall. That's just oh, what's no. gonna happen. Oh! Ooh. Oh, you got me in the head. Oh, this is gonna feel good. Yes, 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 that is how you knit hog. Dick. What are you doing over here? Hey, we got a new 4K monitor. Whoa. It's our first one. Look at all those pixels. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tiny. I don't think you can even really, oh, wait. you can't even see them. Brought something. So many pixels. Well, that helps a little bit. You can see it through space and time. That was uh, it. In normal usage, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. 
it's so pixel dense compared to what we're used to even with a 1440p monitor that it's, it's a fun new toy, right? But in terms of actual performance, I've been playing a few games and it runs okay. Like, not as well as you would hope. The Considering we have all the Titans. We have four Titans, right? Yeah. I mean, we're only using three of them actively, but even with two Titans, you would think you could really run games pretty damn well at 4K. That hasn't been my experience so far. I've run Metro for a little while, Metro Last Light, with everything. Granted, I had everything cranked up to Ultra, sure. but it barely could hit 30 frames per second. But if you're buying a 4K monitor, it's not to play with the settings on medium. I mean, Exactly. You know, like Metro is a super demanding game, but I expected to be able to run at least 30 FPS on it. And I tried some Rome 2 Total War. That ran pretty well at 30 to 60 sometimes until I zoomed in really close on the troops. And granted, no matter how powerful your computer is, that's usually going to make it kind of chug. But especially at 4K, you know, it would go from kind of a reasonable 30 down to like 15 or 20 with a big battle. So that was kind of disappointing. And I've been running the Bioshock Infinite benchmark a little bit. And Looks like you're getting 30 to 45. Yeah, it's pretty good. It'll dip down to the 20s sometimes, but you know, it's it's not the steady 60. I would like to be able to hit it 4K that I kind of thought we'd be able to with with two Titans powering everything. But it's at least it's at least playable. You know, yeah. It's well, just it's, the question is, do you want to make that trade off? It is crazy crisp, though. I mean, it looks great. Uh, What's it like just using it, though, for like OS stuff? So I think that's actually a bigger problem than for gaming, is when you're in a game like Bioshock, it, it looks really nice, and a lot of times the UI will scale OK in, in a game, especially in modern games. But when you're on the desktop, things get really, really tiny. You gotta, you gotta have your magnifying glass right. ready. So just to be able to kind of see any of the icons or anything, I actually have this scaled up to 125% in Windows right now. So at the default 100% setting, it's really, really small. And the bigger issue is just not many pieces of software actually support the scaling very intelligently. If you look at Chrome by Firefox, Chrome is super small. Oh my God. Firefox actually scales properly with the UI, so it's at least a little better. But in, in general, like day-to-day -day use on the desktop when you're just writing or web browsing, it's it's kind of like it hinders your experience more so than it adds but to it. But if you were Lieutenant Commander Data, you could uh, you could scan a lot of articles real fast. I guess that's a plus. You know? <laughs> it doesn't even Steam doesn't even seem to have scaling. I mean, yeah, Steam looks really tiny, and this is blown up twenty five percent. So with yeah. one hundred, really really small. It's it's kind of a pain to browse, honestly. So I think that's the big issue with four K right now is especially in Windows, just like the UI scaling yeah. and software scaling is just not there. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's worth investing yet, is my, right. is my gut feeling. It's an awesome, I mean, novelty just to see Bioshock at that resolution, but um, you know, how, how is the monitor otherwise? Like, is it just a good monitor anyway? You know, I haven't used it a ton. I'm pretty impressed with the colors and the general quality of it. The, the response time seems really good. It's a pretty monitor, but you know, at home I run a, a 1440p monitor and we have a few 1440p's here and I have like a Dell UltraSharp as well that's, uh, it's only 1080, but those are all IPS monitors and there are kind of two main types of like display tech on the market right now, IPS and TN. And IPS monitors have really, really great color quality, really good viewing angles, so if you look at it from the side or whatever, it still looks great. And to keep costs down, this is a TN panel. So TN panels have better response times, but the colors aren't generally as good, the viewing angles aren't as good. Uh, yeah. So, you know, those things could be better. I would probably hold out for an IPS monitor were mm. I to buy my own 4K monitor. I think we're getting close to that point though, where these things can actually be affordable, because this thing uh, is actually able to run at 60 hertz, which a few of the earlier 4K monitors weren't able to do. Oh, really? So that's good, yeah. Wow. And another issue is you have to use DisplayPort to be able to put that out. You can't use HDMI yet because they're waiting for HDMI 2.0 to implement that. Mm. So it's going to be a while before HDMI is really good for 4K unless you can live with 30 hertz. And who can who can do that? Who could do that? How much is it though? It's actually 700 bucks. Really? Yeah. So get out of here. 
So that's a kind of a reasonable price. Pretty right? good for a 4K monitor. I mean, it's expensive for a display in general. It's, a, it's expensive for a monitor. If you look on Amazon, it's actually only like 620 or so, yeah. so it's even cheaper. Uh, but that's still a lot of money to spend on your monitor when you could get a perfectly decent 1080p monitor for like yeah. 200, 250. And with the hardware you probably have at home, you, you want to be running max settings at 1080 rather than struggling to get a frame rate at 4K. Yeah, I would say if you have 700 bucks to spend, maybe buy you know a GTX 780 instead of buying a 4K monitor. Yeah, you'll see probably see a better improvement. I mean, it is amazing watching this video. Like, it is it is beautiful to look at, but. I, I guess I would, I don't know, based on what you said, it seems like wait for it to become the standard. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Early you, adopting seems like a bad idea at this point. And you can tell that to keep it at that price, they kind of had to cut some corners. Like, the monitor looks nice, but the base is actually plastic instead of metal. Oh, really? And it's not at all adjustable. You can only tilt. There's no height adjustment or anything. So if you, and there's no visa mount. Give me something to throw. A non-adjustable monitor? That's crazy. So, you know, it's it's cool 4K, 700 bucks, 600 bucks even when you get it on a discount. We're getting to the point where these are affordable. I would say in like another year, you could probably buy a 4K monitor and have a graphics card to go with it that will actually run games pretty well. Cool. In the meantime, you just need to be rich, basically. <laughs> just, just be rich is our advice to everybody. Uh, and then you can have everything at any time. Well, I mean, it does look great. I look forward to it being the standard. Um, I'm not going to invest in one. Yeah, I'm going to keep tinkering with it and see what kind of performance yeah. I can get at 4K. Good luck benchmarking. Thanks. I'll get you that magnifying glass yeah, pack you, so you, you can, can see what it. you're doing. You can keep it. How was the interview? Oh yeah, it was good. Uh, good, good seeing how Killing Four Two is coming along. Yep. Cool. Dude, nice. Whoa. Dude, good shot. Yeah. We're pretty good at Counter Strike now. That was a crazy no scope. Kind of the best. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I've totally seen this footage before. This is like, this is like the final championship game of the Cataway 2014 tournament. You're just, you're just watching Counter-Strike. Show me your hands. No. Come on. Dude, you're just, you're just watching Counter-Strike. Tyler. 